Hey guys, I'm back. So today I'm going to tell you uh, how, how you might step up an AC voltage. So um, we're going to use my little function generator like this. We're going to take the square wave output, which is right here. I'll show you on my scope in a minute. Um, but we're going to, I'm going to, I choose square wave just because I think it's the easiest to generate. You can use a 555 or your microcontroller's PWM function or, or build up this crude bit of op amp circuitry here to um, actually develop a square wave, but I, I feel it's the easiest and uh, waveform you're, you're gonna be able to come up with the most to customize this to your best ability. So I'm gonna show you how to do it using one of these, just regular mains transformers. Now before I begin, just note that this won't work with an AC to DC transformer. It has to take in the mains, which is AC, and output AC, and you'll know this because it says AC to AC. You probably, you probably can't see that, but um, has to be AC to AC because that means the only thing in here is a transformer. An AC to DC could be a switch mode which won't work um, or it could have some diodes which will make it not work. It needs to be just a pure 60 hertz mains transformer. Okay, so uh, how, how do we start? Well, we have our incoming square wave here, right? Okay, and uh, down here you know, that's ground from, from the square wave. So we're going to feed this in. We have our transformer here, right? We have our main side. This is usually mains. And right here we have our low voltage side with fewer turns. So we're going to hook up our, our low voltage square wave. Could be, you know, 5 volts, 3.3 volts maybe. All right. And um, we're going to hook that up to the low voltage side. Now, on the high voltage side, you'll get a, a much larger voltage. And um, that's because there's more turns on the high voltage side, because normally it's taking high voltage to low voltage. Uh, but in this case, we're doing low voltage to high voltage. Now, keep in mind, there's a few limitations of this. One is that because in a normal transformer, it'll take high voltage and low amperage and transform it to low voltage and high amperage. But this is going to take low voltage and high amperage and turn it to high voltage low amperage. So keep in mind, you're going to be able to draw very little current out of this top side. Uh, practically zero. You might be able to get 10, 20 microamps maybe, um, is what I believe. So, um, you, you know, it's going to be uh, pretty difficult to, to draw a significant or even a meaningful amount of current out of this thing. So you're going to have to use very high value resistors if you want a divider or, um, you know, um, so it's, it's, it's really just experimental. Um, but, you know, use it for what you want. So, Here's our transformer again, and um, here's our function generator, and we'll get this. Now, I have the function generator plugged in, you're going to see the scope in a second, but there's something key I forgot to mention, which is a capacitor. So we have our square wave here, and we're going to have to connect up a capacitor between um, the square wave generator and the coil. This is going to remove all the DC offset of the um, square wave, because, you know, maybe your square wave doesn't have DC offset, but Maybe it does, so this capacitor is going to remove the DC offset, and that's that's uh, key. So we're going to plug in our scope here, and um, take a look on the scope. So you can see the scope is plugged in, and now you can see we have our waveform up here on the scope, okay? So we're going to turn this down a bit, because, um, oh, there we go. No wonder, my probe was on times 1, not times 10. So we're going to switch it like that, or actually, let's get it like that, and adjust our trigger level. Um, there we go. So now you can see we have our in, uh, incoming square wave. It's easiest to see it like that. So now we're going to shift over here, and we're going to unwrap our transformer. Okay, On the low voltage side, uh, this transformer... It does, the, again, the, the way you connect it up doesn't matter because it's a coil, so you can connect the outer to, uh, to ground like I'm going to do, or the inner to ground, it doesn't matter. Okay, and we're going to take the uh, inner, and we're just going to, um, if this clip will stay, stay on, which it might not. It's a bit finicky doing this in front of the camera. But we clip it on, and then we stick it in into the um, to the barrel jack, and now we can reconnect up our scope and everything. Okay. So it's it's going to be a bit of an effort to get it to actually stay in the barrel jack, but there we go. And now on the um, top end of this transformer, 
you're going to see that we're going to have our um, our output. Okay, so we're going to connect the ground lead to one of the pins of the transformer. Again, it doesn't matter which one. And the uh, scope probe tip to the other one. Uh, now it's uh, everything's actually running properly. Um, I, I was having a times 10 issue. The switches on the probes that got switched. That is something you have to watch out for is the switches on the probes can get switched fairly easily with these type of switchable times 1 times 10 probes. But anyway, same set as before, square wave through the capacitor into the um, low voltage AC input of the uh, AC transformer. And um, then you have the uh, output of the transformer into channel 2. And they are both set on the scope to the exact same settings. So I want you to take a look at this, okay? Sorry for the weird angle. Um, take a look at this, okay? This is the same exact settings, 5 volts per division, that is times 10 compensated. Okay, so look, we have the bottoms of the signals both lines up, and to get to the tops, way up there. So, this signal is much larger, okay? So as you can see, this is the original signal, and this is the signal we're getting out much larger and if we uh, switch it you can actually see there is some some weird uh, harmonics going on but that's because we're at about 20 microseconds per division so this signal has roughly a one two three four eighty microsecond period roughly which is um a much higher frequency than this transformer was originally meant to be. It was originally meant to be on a 60 hertz frequency, um, but now it's um, at a, a much higher frequency. So, so um, that's you know that's probably the result of um, that's why there's these um, these weird harmonics like uh, those two. Okay, so uh, I just calculated uh, we're driving this at um, around 12.5 kilohertz, um, which is a lot higher frequency than uh, originally intended. Um, and also we're uh, driving it with a square wave, which is also a lot higher, higher frequency than was originally intended. But an interesting thing is since this uh, is such a low um, here, th now they're not going to be the same time base, or sorry, same volts per division. Um, uh, because of, um, just to, so you can see it on the screen, but I'll, I'll separate them here. Um, but the interesting thing is that since this is uh, switching um, high amperage, low voltage, to uh, high voltage, uh, low amperage, if I just touch one of the um, pins, um, th this, the pin that the um, probe tip is connected to, it uh, becomes pretty sinusoidal. Um, but if I touch the other one, not much happens. If I touch them both, it's going to shrink in amplitude a lot because of my body resistance. Uh, but I just thought that's interesting, is that loading it down just a slight bit is going to make it um, more sinusoidal. So I'm going to get a 3.3 mega ohm resistor here, and I'm just going to leave it between them. Uh, see if I can get it uh, nice and connected between the two uh, poles here. So that's with a 3.3 meg, and that's without. So 3.3 uh, meg doesn't do too much. Um, at least it doesn't drop the voltage any. Uh, but as you can see, it does something. It makes it a bit more sinusoidal. Um, so, you know, that's, that's an interesting artifact there, is that loading it down will actually cause it to become uh, slightly more sinusoidal than... Um, it was before, but keep in mind this, you know, this isn't perfect by any means, so that's 3.3 meg, and um, that's not, so you can see that thing there um, goes away a bit. Um, and now, so going back, you can see this is, you know, really simple. I mean, it's, it's involving a square wave, a capacitor, and a transformer you have probably laying around already. Um, that you're not using for your cell phone or, or your camera or whatever ever. Just make sure it's AC to AC. So I'm going to switch my multimeter to volts AC. And keep in mind, uh, this multimeter is not um, super, I don't think it's true RMS, so it's not going to measure exactly um, 
But I'm going to probe the uh, um, end of the uh, capacitor, reading 1.8 volts at the end of the capacitor um, relative to this ground. And then on this side, relative to the scope ground, we're getting uh, 35 volts. Um, so, and interesting, let's just do an experiment to see if, uh, no, actually, if we hook the scope up, which is interesting, it seems to actually raise our voltage, connecting one side to mains ground, um, which is interesting. Uh, but you can also see on the scope is that this voltage is also somewhat referenced to mains ground, because I removed the scope ground lead, and there's a, still a voltage relative to this uh, ground probe. So um, that's just something to be wary of, is that this is, is still slightly referenced to mains earth, even without the scope referencing it to. But you can see there's a many times um, voltage increase to about 35 volts from the original signal um, of 1.8 after the capacitor. Um, so, you know, this is an interesting, interesting technique to use if you need a high voltage AC. And keep in mind, you, you can rectify this to DC, but don't expect it to provide too much current. So um, 